everyone. My name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss and welcome to an autumn coloring session. We're going to be focusing on how to color a background on a coloring page with some fun autumn colors and we're going to be using the beautiful Distress inks for the background so we'll be doing some fun effects with those today. It's going to be lots of fun but before we dive in and get started I need to announce a new giveaway that we're starting for November 2020. So if you're watching in November, you need to get your entries in because look at this epic gift we're giving away in November. Oh! <laughs> I am so excited. Steve and I are really looking forward to giving this away. It's a complete set of my favorite color pencils, the beautiful Prismacolor Premier Pencils. <laughs> this was Steve's idea. Thanks, Steve, for doing this. Tune yeah. in to the end of the video where I'll be telling you all the details on how to enter for this very set of Prismacolor Premier Pencils. I'm so excited. But you got to watch to the end for all the details. So let's get started on coloring some autumn pages. We have some new pages that we want to give to you as a free download so that you can celebrate autumn. So let me show you those pages. We also have a brand new page that I'm going to release today that I drew for all of you. This is a free one that we're letting all of you enjoy to celebrate fall. Woohoo! <laughs> it's all beautiful fall around here right now. So this one is free for a limited time. So you can come and become a free member at Coloring Bliss to get this one right here. And then we have this one, which is a multiple page download. And it's got, I don't know how many pages, but when you <clears> print <throat> it off... Six. I was looking. We did that back in... 2015. Yeah, so it, it's a banner and you can print it off and it says give thanks when you print it off. So it's pretty cool. Um, I, one of my suggestions is you can print it off and then on Thanksgiving you can have the kids color it and then hang it up around your, pay, your table and it'll be a fun decoration that the kids can enjoy um, that um, they can do while you're finishing up the last minute fixings for dinner or you can do it and hang it up so that's a fun multiple page download that you can enjoy um, and color so that's two free fun downloads you can come and get and then like I said I also drew a new page and this page is part of our premium library right here this is a brand new one that you can come and enjoy choose to be grateful some fun lettering this is the one I'm going to be coloring today um, really excited excited about it has some fun fall foliage of pretty bow and a pumpkin at the bottom so this is the one we're going to be working on although I did have Steve print it on our beautiful watercolor paper we have some amazing watercolor paper at coloring bliss if you don't know about it you can have books printed on it at our print shop but you can also purchase this paper which runs through most home printers. It's quite a unique watercolor paper. It's a little thinner than most watercolor papers and it's got a nice um, smoother texture than most watercolor papers. So works really good in printers. It's available at, um, to purchase at our um, Bliss print shop as well. So come check that out. So I said, Steve, will you please print it on watercolor paper for me? Cause I have some fun ideas of what I want to do with these distress inks on this paper. Paper. So that's what we're going to do. Fun. So the very first thing I need to do is tape it down. I'm going to tape it to this. This is a cutting board. It, I picked it up at our dollar store. It was two to a pack. So it's gotten a lot of use. In fact, they're starting to look a little down the road. I might end up picking up some new ones. I think I've had them for a few years now, so I think they've done their job. So I'm going to tape this down with some low tack painter's tape um, to this board so that I can move it around and manipulate it. So I'm going to time lapse that so you don't have to stick sit here through me taping and then I'll come right back and we will get started on the fun background ideas that I have. Okay, tape time.
Okay, we've got everything taped down now. So this will give a nice crisp border around the edge of the coloring page. And it'll just keep everything down so that I can work with the paper and not have to worry about it getting out of control. So let's talk colors. Um, we recently were on a bit of a camping trip in our RV and I was really inspired by how the really dark blue sky, it was crisp autumn days, really dark blue sky with all the beautiful autumn colors. And I was looking at the color wheel and noticed that um, if you look at it, you get the oranges, yellow oranges and yellows of autumn. And then straight across from it is basically this the color of the sky. It was this blue violet, really dark blue during the day. It was really interesting how it did that. So that's kind of the inspiration I want to um, follow for this coloring page. Sort of a complementary color scheme except I want to use instead of just yellow orange and blue violet I want to open up the the color over here and use sort of an analogous over on this side and then over to the blue violet. Now there's a word for this for this color scheme and I'm gonna research it and put it up on the screen right now. So that's the name of this color scheme that I'm using. Um, I don't use it very often, but it's a really kind of fun color scheme, gives you a little bit more options. So that's what we're going to do. So in the background, what we need to keep in mind is that we need some contrast. We're gonna be laying the colors of the leaves on top. We can add green into the leaves if we want to because that's pretty normal in natural to nature to have green mixed into the colors of the leaves. But the bow and the lettering, I think I'm going to reserve for the blue-violet. That'll really stand out. That'll be that moment of complementary color that will really pop. But um, the background I'm thinking needs to be maybe a really bright light yellow and then the oranges, the yellow orange and the orange for the leaves. What do you think, Steve? He's my color man. I'm looking at him for advice. Oh, I thought you were going to do the blue background. No. With the bright... Yeah. Oranges on top of it. I'm thinking <clears throat> yellow background with yellow, orange, and orange leaves with pops of green in the leaves. And then blue violet lettering and blue violet. Well, it's up to you. Do you think Whatever that'll you work? Want. <laughs> that's my my thinking i just worry that they won't stand off the background enough if that's it's my yellow. worry too the, the contrast is going to yeah. be the key contrast means um the difference it needs to have enough value difference lights to darks um or texture contrast can mean a lot of different things but right now what i'm worrying about is if i make this background in tones of yellows will the leaves have enough contrast or difference that they'll actually stand out from that background? Steve doesn't think so. <gasps> da -da -da -da. <laughs> okay, so let's see if I can make this work. <laughs> okay, so these are my Distress Inks. These are by Tim Holtz or Ranger. Um, they're really cool. They're water-based um, ink, so they, they can flow and move. They're really fun. They come in really neat colors. Um, I like these small color, these small ink pads rather than the bigger ones because I don't use them a lot, so I don't feel like I'm wasting them because they're just small and I don't need a lot of color. Um, when I use them, this is sufficient for me. Um, the way I keep them are in these cases that you can purchase for them. And then I taped down a little pad back here that has um, a little swatch of each color that is inside here. So my swatches are handy and I can see exactly what's in here. So right away I can see that mustard seed, spice marmalade, and maybe even antique linen would be some good colors out of this box. And then in this box we've got fossilized amber and maybe scattered straw. But again, we have to be careful not to go into orange too much. So saying that out loud, I'm thinking antique linen and mustard seed are maybe our two 
best bets. Steve is doubting my color plan. <laughs> so <laughs> I believe in you. He believes in me. We'll see what I can do. So I'm going to pull out those two colors. Those are my most yellowy colors. I guess I'm kind of lacking in like yellow, like sunshine yellow. I don't really have a sunshine yellow color. Maybe it's time to buy more distressed inks. <laughs> okay, so the way you use these... Well, there's lots of ways to use these, but the way I'm going to use them today is with these little um, applicator stamp type tools here. Um, you can get them with different kinds of pads. These are the felt type pads. They're the ones I prefer. They also have more of a foam type pad. And then I keep the pad that I use for each um, little stamp. Um, inking pad on the underside of the pad so then I can just switch them out pretty easy and I know I've got the right color here so I think actually I'm gonna start with this color here put it on the end of here like that and then I've got here underneath um, my plastic pad. This is the Tonic Studios Tim Holtz Glass Mix Media Mat that I like working on here. And it was actually designed for these little pads. So you can take these little pads and apply ink right into these squares and have multiple colors of color going on multiple pads of color, I don't know how you say that, going on in these little squares. You can mix them and work with them. And so this is really handy to have. Um, but you can also just use like a ceramic plate, piece of plastic, any kind of non-porous surface to apply this um, down so that you can pick it up and work with it. Okay, so I'm gonna put this right here so I remember that this is the antique linen color. And then we're also going to be working with this color here. And this is the um, mustard seed color. And I'm gonna start it right here. That's a nice sunshiny color. And we actually do have more than one of these tools, so I might as well get both of these going. Oops. Okay, so I have a little tool for each color. Okay, so I want to create sort of a vignette effect. Let's take this off. I know I'm gonna need more of this because this is a pretty light color. So I'm gonna lay down a lot of that color. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up and get a bunch of this color onto my tool and just start applying it. And I'm going to go ahead and go over these leaves because I'm going to be coloring these leaves with colors that are similar in this color family. So I'm not too worried about the colors um, interacting in a weird way. If I was going to be coloring these objects with like violet or something that would clash and mix together to cause weird combinations then I wouldn't just go right over it yeah we're gonna need a lot of this color I can tell already so these little ranger ink pads come in um, bigger sizes and they also have re-inkers so the colors that you use the most you can buy more of I'm gonna try to create sort of a vignette is that the right word, Steve? To, yeah, vignette, right? Yep. A vignette effect. Oh, I'm really liking this antique linen color. Is that one of the reasons you wanted to use a yellow in the background? Yeah. So I could just go right over the leaves and not be... Yeah, because if you did blue, that would sure make it hard. Yeah, I don't know... If you'd you have could to like do mask this. out the leaves. Yeah, you'd have to do it in a totally different way. And then I like to do this, see how some areas will go on stronger and heavier. Kind of gives an antique look, which I'm totally okay with. Okay, so I'm going to time lapse this as I go around and build this color up all the way around. 
And the idea is to have it darker on the corners and have it fade to lighter in the center. But I'm going to avoid putting this color as much as possible into the bow and the lettering because that is going to be the violet, which violet and yellows mixed together will create more of a brown neutralizing type color and we don't want that. We want these to be a bright violet type, type color, blue violet. Okay, time lapse. Little snoring girl. All right, now we're ready to bring in mustard seed. I already started here in this bottom right corner, so you can see the difference from the right corner to the left corner. Let me get this there. Okay, and wow, does it really bring up that yellow. So pretty, I love that yellow in the corner. But I love how soft the um, antique linen is looking. So I think this is going to work out really well. Still a little worried whether my um, leaves are going to have enough contrast on top. I'm gonna have to use some pretty strong, vibrant colors on top, but that's okay. Autumn leaves are strong and vibrant. Oh, isn't that pretty? I'm keeping it right in this corner, not bringing it out all the way. Again, really reinforcing that vignette. This is much stronger pigment. It's taking so much less. I think that's the third time I've put down a square of color where the antique linen I had to keep putting tons of ink down to get it to do what I wanted. Oh, so pretty. Okay, now this corner. <laughs> I was trying to change the camera and I threw my tool. Steve, would you <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, I just wanted you to be able to see this view a little bit better. <laughs> Throwing tools all over the place. All right. Now. Now I have to decide, do I want to go even darker in the corners? What do you think, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> No, he says no. I think you're right. The problem is I'm having a lot of fun doing this. <laughs> this is really fun. Doing this kind of effect is just really satisfying and fun. Look how pretty. Woo! And it's doing exactly what I want it to do, which is focus the eye right into the little sentiment in the center. It's really pretty. Okay, I'm happy about that. All right, now we're going to move on to actually coloring the leaves. And for that, I've pulled out these. I'm kind of thinking through products I haven't used a lot lately, um, and these are definitely in that category. I haven't touched my mermaid markers in a while. And right now over with the Bliss Partners, we're learning all about water-based markers, and these are a water-based marker. They have a bristle nib, I'll show you that here in a second, but um, so I just haven't used them much lately. Well, if you have any chance of getting really good saturated colors, yeah. it's gonna be those mermaids. These are really strong, look at these strong colors. So we've got, what I need is some oranges, um, so Pirate's Gold, Sandbar. Oh. Um, is that it? That's what I'm like, what? That's it? There's no, like, There's not, yeah, orange. Like yellow orange and orange. We could mix. Which you need. I could mix these two, but I don't want to be mixing. Maybe we'll have to reach into Tombow's for more. I was hoping for a glittery one, too. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm a little disappointed here. Pirate's gold will be good. Sandbar, I think, is too light yellow, but we could still use it. Um, but yeah, I'm a little disappointed. Pirate's gold, let's find that one. This is sandbar. 
This is Pirate's Gold. Yeah. Okay, so we've got those two that we can use for sure. That's good. And then, of course, green. They've got seaweed we could use. This is seaweed. Ooh, I like seaweed. Yeah, this is the seaweed color right here. That's a good one. Okay. So, and then I think we're going to have to go into um, some other markers for the rest of them. Now, for the, the blue violet, there's deep sea, which I think I grabbed already. Yeah, deep sea for the lettering. That will be a really good blue violet. So I'm excited about that color. Look how pretty this color palette. Oh, pretty, pretty. Very happy with that. Okay, so let's um, put these things away real quick. So like I said, what I do is I take off this little end because I'm so frugal and I keep these even though they're just like pennies or less than pennies, but that's just how I roll. I'm a very frugal crafter. Hey, the frugal crafter. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably where I learned to do that was from the frugal crafter. Okay, now I can clean up this part of the project or at least get it out of the way. These little drawers I picked up at the Dollar Tree to store these tools like that. Okay, that gives us more room. All right, let's see. So this is the Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers. It's basically a water brush with her ink inside and it has a valve and it feeds the ink to the end. Now, if you get one of her glitter ones, you have to um, gently agitate it like this to get the glitter mixed in. But these are the non-glitter ones, so I don't have to worry about that. So let's see, I'm gonna do one of these leaves over here in the area that we're most concerned about and see if, we've go if we're going to have enough contrast. Let's see. So it just paints right out, is how this works. Now we are on watercolor paper. So I've got options as far as adding more colors on top and blending colors in. Okay, so we can let that sit. In fact, while it's wet, I could come in with her brown, which is called Reef. And because this is watercolor paper, I could add a little Reef in, and then with the tip of the orange, mix that in to get a darker orange like that. So, now we're going to want to let that sit and dry because it's all water, any wet medium, even alcohol markers will change as it's drying. So I'm going to let that sit and dry and see if we feel like that's enough contrast. A good way to test that is to look at your object, squint a little bit, and if even with your squinty eyes that object can pop out from the background, then you're doing good. But if you squint and they sort of melt into each other, then you've got a problem and you need to <laughs> address it and come up with a way to get more contrast. So I'm gonna let that dry. That was this combination. And while that's drying, I want to play around with the lettering a little bit and see. So my thinking is we can use this deep sea color and then I've got a couple jelly rolls with a little bling on it that I'm thinking we can go on top of it when it's done. I've got um, jelly roll metallic and jelly roll gold, which has that gold shadow on it. So I'm going to um, just be brave and go for it here. I keep taking the caps off off to the side because once in a while these get um, a little bit of pool of the ink in the cap and when you pull the cap off it will splatter and if it's going to splatter I'd rather have it splatter on here than on my coloring page so that's why I'm taking the cap off to the side. Okay let's see how this is going to look. Is it too dark? That's pretty dark you guys. Now one of the problems with the mermaid markers for me is that the bristles of her brush are very long and that makes them a little hard to control for me. 
don't have a lot of practice with long bristled brushes. That almost looks black. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to dry lighter. Yeah. So we have options. Again, we're on watercolor paper. So I could try lifting. Oh, it's starting to turn blue-violet as it dries. Can you see that? Look up at the top of the sea on the serif part. You can see the blue-violet. But that's pretty dark. So what I'm thinking, because I just dove in, is let's do the word choose in the really dark, full color. And then maybe in on Grateful, we'll pick something that is a little blue lighter blue-violet. Nice. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to time lapse. I'll just go ahead and color in choose, and then we'll come back and see where I'm at. Okay, time lapse. All right, we're making progress on this lettering. Decided to do a bit of a gradient, um, and I've moved over to the blue bottle color of the Jane Davenport Mermaid Markers. So what I'm doing is laying down the full strength paint at the top of the letter. And then I found this detail brush, although it's a mess. It's nothing special. Um, I think it's an acrylic paintbrush, just a teeny tiny round paintbrush. It's a number two round. Um, it's not holding a point very good, so it's bothering me. But what I'm doing is getting it wet and then pushing off almost all the water so it's just damp. And then pulling that paint down. Let me change views so you can see and sort of um, watering it down as it comes down so that the more watered down it is, the more of the white of the paper shows through that ink or that paint. So that way I'm getting a gradient, the full color up here and then the watered down version of the paint down here. So I think it looks really pretty. I'll show you that again. Here's the full strength ink up here. I'm wondering if I can do something to the word choose up above in a similar way, even though the ink has already dried or the marker color. I think I might be able to reawaken it because we are on watercolor paper. It depends on how permanent this is. So I'm going to finish these last three letters and then we will see what I can do with the word choose because I'm really liking this gradient look on the letters. It's really pretty. So I will time lapse the rest of these three letters. Whoa, I don't know what that was. Out in, oh, I bet it was some garbage cans out in the <laughs> driveway. So I'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm working on lifting some of this dark violet color, the deep sea, out of the tops of the letters to try to get a gradient. So the way I'm doing that is with a wet brush. I'm laying down quite a lot of water to reactivate it. I think it needs a little more water here. There. And as soon as you feel like it's awake, you use a paper towel. And when you lift it, see how much of the ink comes up? And then it leaves behind um, a tint of that color that you did. So I'm able to lift some of it. It has stained the paper below it, which is fine. It just means it's a strong color. Um, so I think I'm getting the effect that I was hoping for, which is more of a gradient. So we're going light to dark, dark to light. Now the word to be. Steve, should I do the to be in like a dark orange color or stick with the violets? You could do the top of it a dark violet and the bottom a dark blue like it's Ooh, transitioning. I like that idea. Okay, let's see if I can do that. So that would be these two colors. Wish me luck. <laughs> okay, here we go. Start with the dark color up top. Sometimes the, the tricky part here is these letters, the lowercase letters are lower, so if the top of that is going to be oh, yeah. violet, so... so it's like it has to go longer on the T or something. Yeah. Now we'll bring in the other blue. And I think we'll lift this with the paper towel. And I'm hoping then we only get like the stained version. So straight down and lift it up. There, yeah. So we get a lightened version because I picked up a whole bunch of, see the TO right there? <laughs> so yeah, that works. Okay, we'll go again now with the, the word B. Okay, pull this down like that, up over the top, only halfway though. Now I've already dripped some of the blue-violet um, ink over here, so I guess our plan is going to be blue-violet speckles. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably do lots of speckling of all the colors, because you guys know me. I love to speckle, not just because I like the look, but because it's fun and it hides any little mistakes, like accidental speckles. Okay, here we go again. Lift. Yep, that worked too. I like it. Good idea, Steve. Thanks. Okay, then I think we'll probably use the purples and the blues up here on the bow, too. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll time lapse that and come back and you can see how the bow turns out.
Okay, we've got these sort of oak leaves done. I think they turned out really pretty. Lots of contrast, feeling good about it. I'm moving on to these little trio of leaves. I don't know what kind they are. When I drew them, I um, just sort of drew leaves. I don't know. <laughs> so these ones I'm doing with a combination of sandbar yellow and the seaweed green. And I'll show you how I'm doing them. All I'm doing is laying down the yellow. Let's see, make sure I'm in the shot. Good. So I'm coloring the, the little trio of leaves like this with the yellow. So they're good and wet with the yellow. And then just in the middle, hitting it with a kiss of the green. So the green just sort of disperses into it. So these ones are going a lot faster than those oak leaves. Those took a little bit more time, but I think it's totally worth it. They're going to be, I think, the highlight leaf on this page and really frame out the page. Now there's one more kind of leaf I have to figure out what to do with. That's these leaves right here. I'm not too sure, haven't decided what to do with them yet. I may do kind of an all green leaf. That's kind of what I'm thinking right now. They'll stand out more than if I try to do um, another orange leaf. So that's what I'm thinking is maybe using a couple different kinds of greens on these leaves. There's not a lot of them except down by the pumpkin. So that's another reason to make them more all green. So they'll really stand out well against the orange pumpkin. And then the other thing I have to decide is what to do with that orange pumpkin. I think the color combination I used for the oak leaves will work really good on the acorns which are right in front of my pumpkin. So that means the pumpkin needs to have a different kind of orange. So we gotta figure that out. Okay, I'll keep working on these yellow green leaves. You do have to be a little bit careful um, here on top of the violet. Um, it does pull up some of the color from the violet. But that's okay. It doesn't hurt anything. All right, I'll keep working here. All right, so for the bigger leaves, I have decided to go with green. You can see how I've started them right here. I'm using um, seaweed green and kelp. And what I've decided to do is color in the whole leaf with the lighter green, the, the seaweed, and then flick in a little bit of the kelp and then blend it out. So this is the kind of coloring techniques we're teaching with the Bliss Partners with the water-based markers. Um, we are doing a four-part fast-track coloring series. We're going to be learning all kinds of tips and tricks, including backgrounds, and we're also going to be learning how to add raindrops or dewdrops onto objects in this fast track series. So if you would like to learn more about how to color with water-based markers, then join the Bliss Partners. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so 
we just have a couple more of these leaves to color in and then we get to figure out the pumpkin. Okay, let's see if we can make this pumpkin orange. I know that I'm going to color these acorns about the same color that I did over here on these oak leaves. So the pumpkin I'm going to attempt to use the pirate's gold with the reef, that's what I did over here, but I'm going to add in lobster, which is a red, a really strong red, to try to get that orange color. So let's start by washing the whole pumpkin with our pirate's gold. Well, maybe not the whole pumpkin because I don't want it to dry totally at least. And then I'm gonna mix in some of this red. This is the important color here to help it stand out as a different object than the acorns. Hopefully you can hear Rose snoring. I sure I'm grateful for Rose. Um, I chose the sentiment on this coloring page very carefully. I am really careful to choose to be grateful. Sometimes it can be really difficult to choose to be grateful. Um, but there are certain things in my life that make it easy to choose to be grateful. So I'd like to ask all of you to comment about the things that you are grateful for. The things that no matter what's going on in the world around us, you are grateful for. It doesn't matter really what's going on. Rose is one of those things my sweet little dog who is hanging off the side of her pillow right now. <laughs> she is my um, really special companion. We got her to hang out with me um, because I spend a lot of time chronically ill, lots of long hours of just feeling miserable, but she is always by my side. So I am extremely grateful for her. Another thing I'm really grateful for is um, my husband and business partner. He um, puts up with a lot because of my chronic illness. And it's there are days and days in a row where I am miserable and he puts up with it and I am really grateful. He could choose, if we're going to use that word, choose, choose another life. He could choose other things, but he chooses to stick it out with me and I am grateful for that. I'm also very grateful for all of you. You make this community a really amazing place to be. It um, makes my life more meaningful and a reason for me to um, get up even on days when I don't feel well. You, I want to do things that make your life more meaningful. And so I want to say thank you to all of you for being um, a reason for me to have gratitude in my life. I am very grateful for all of you making coloring bliss possible. <laughs> She's really snoring. <laughs> Hopefully she's having a really good dream. Her little snout is really going for it right now. Okay, I'm trying to color these acorns now. I'm trying to give the base of the acorn a little more yellowy, and then I'm gonna color the top of the acorn, the cap, a little on the brown side. 
Well, that's kind of what I'm remembering acorns look like. Hopefully <laughs> I'm close to right on that. I should look at a reference photo, but it doesn't really matter. Um, this is a more whimsical, not very realistic coloring page. We're not really worrying too much about light source and all those things. If I was worrying about all that, I would look up a reference photo. But tonight, I am just kind of having fun with these tools. Okay, I'm darkening up the caps because I want them to have some good contrast between the pumpkin behind it and the body of the acorn. So I'm just going back and laying in more of this. This is that reef color. Okay, I kind of like that. I think we got an orange pumpkin that looks different, but still in the world of what we've colored. And the acorns look like they are in the right place. So yeah, I think we did it. Now the bow I wanted to readdress. I'm going to have to use a Posca pen here, a Posca pen trick. Let me show you what I am I'm worried about. There's not much contrast. I, I got some decent contrast going on right here between the ribbon coming out the back, um, but I want more. So what we're going to do is with my Posca paint pen is just sort of paint on some white paint and then with my finger smudge it in to lighten this color. And I'm being messy on purpose to give it some texture in case you were wondering because I have another plan also for this which includes the gel pens. So I just sort of want to lighten it and add some texture while I'm at it. Okay, like that. I definitely lightened it. Okay, now it's time to add a little more blitz and bling, including gel pen. And the first thing I want to do is with this one here, I think. <laughs> I think. This is that deep sea, that really dark one. No, we're not going to do that one. We're going to do the blue bottle. I want to add a few splatters, and I think these are juicy enough that I should be able to just tap on it. Maybe not. So in that case, we're going to put some of it onto the glass mixed media mat and grab a nice flippy floppy brush. This is a bigger round brush. I think this is a number eight. Get it a little wet and pick it up and now we should get some spritzes. Don't want too many of the blue. Spritzes, just a few because I did a few by accident. So we might as well add a few more so it looks intentional. <laughs> what do you think so far, Steve? Ooh, I like it. I'm still gonna add more to the bow. I'm letting the Posca paint dry. Okay, let's add um, the brown. I think it will read more orangey as the spritzy speckles. Oh no, it's reading pretty brown. So I'm going to keep those again going with that vignette feel. So keep those on the corners. Hopefully I'm not getting any speckles on rows. <laughs> okay, now the pirate's gold. We can get more in the middle with this.
Ooh, I like that. Down here by the pumpkin. Up here by the bow. Okay, then I wanted some green and we're gonna do the lighter of the greens. Well, that was a lot of paint came out. Okay. Mm, I like that. Okay. Now my brush, and now we're going to come back up to this bow. And I've got a couple pens here. This one is number 654, the gold Sakura. It dries with the gold shadow on it. And then this is number 543, the metallic. Also a Sakura Jelly Roll pen. Both of them are that blue violet, but this one has that gold and that's metallic. So I'm thinking of some just speckles with the gold one. So these will just catch the light when we move it. This um, ink dries really slow. And I just saw a green leaf I missed. I wonder if you guys saw it before me. Hi Mishka. Let's get that green leaf that I missed. Whoa, there's a lot of ink on that. with this pen. Okay, and then while that ink is drying because it needs some time to dry, I'm going to come up here onto our bow, lay some down, and then smear it out. This is going to give a gold and that violet shine to our bow. And I don't know if I'm gonna like it or not. I'm kind of being experimental here. We're gonna find out. Whoa, it really smeared. I didn't mean to smear it that much. We can probably fix that a little bit or we'll have to embrace the smear as I say. Okay, I don't know how I smeared it that much. Okay, this pen. I was picturing adding a few details around the letters.
that. Maybe right here too. Okay, and that should all catch the light. Oof. Yeah, I don't know if I like how I added that gold onto that. Let's see if I put metallic over it. See what that does. Maybe I should have left well enough alone. Okay, I'm just smoothing out the smear effect here and I'm going to peek and see what I think of my mess I'm making here. That's well, better. I think I liked it before I started messing with it better, but that's alright, we're learning. Okay, now we have this smear I created up here. Do I want to try to fix it or just leave it be? Throw a little white paint on it to make sure I use a clean finger. Will the white paint just smear it or will it hide it? That's the question. hit it a little bit. Okay, now we're going to let this dry a second more and I'm going to add a white highlight to a few things. I am looking like I've been doing art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's add a bit of a white highlight here along the tops of the word choose. Give them that bubbly effect. And then um, the word grateful will do the same thing. Oh, this one's trickier. Maybe there. Sure. Okay. <laughs> and then let's hit the pumpkin. couple spots. Okay, that's probably good enough. And maybe the tops of our acorns. Okay, and then the bow. We definitely need some highlights on our bow that went astray because I tried too many things at once. But that's okay because it was fun. These highlights up here are going to turn blue um, because the gel pen likes to um, tint this Posca paint pen. So I'm letting some of them turn blue and then we're going to go over a couple a second time. It might even take a third time. Some of like a so blip. What I'm trying to say is some of them I'm going to leave the blue color and some I'm hoping to get that bright, bright highlight of a white. We'll see if I can, it'll take multiple coats.
Okay. That looks pretty good. I think that will stay white. All right. Woo, that looks good. Now, I think we need to pull the tape. This is one of my favorite parts, is pulling the tape. Let's see if I can get the edge up. There we go. Oh, tearing the paper a little bit. All right, so if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit a thumbs up right now. Um, that tells YouTube that you enjoyed it. Also, make sure you subscribe. And you hit that little bell notification so you know when I upload videos. And as soon as I have revealed this coloring page, I will tell you how to enter for your chance to win our big giveaway this month. We wanted to make sure that someone will have a really fun Christmas gift of the big full set of Prismacolor color pencils. So that's what we're giving away this month, November 2020. Okay, here it is. What do we think? Oh, it's really pretty. I think I got good contrast. Yeah. My leaves are, the only ones that are getting a little lost are the yellowy green ones. Yeah. But I'm kind of okay with that. It kind of builds with that vignette look that I was working towards. Yeah, yeah it does. And even despite our lack of oranges in the Jane Davenport Mermaid markers, we still got some good oranges. And, and despite my messing with the bow and trying a few different things and getting a blue smear, we still have a pretty bow at the top. <laughs> <laughs> so I managed to save it. I'll move it in the light so you can see the bling. Can't really see the other bling that I added. Oh, I see it a little bit. Maybe if I move it really slow, you'll see the little bits of bling I added out on the edge. All right. So let's talk Prismacolor pencils because I want one of you to win this giveaway. You have until the end of November 2020, that's November 30th, 2020, to get your entries in. There is a link in the video description for you to click on. There's lots of different ways to enter to win this exact box. This is the one that we're going to ship to one of you. We're going to announce the winner on December 1st, 2020. And that person, that lucky person is going to get this set of Prismacolor Premier pencils. Good luck, everyone. I'm so excited to give this away. Like I said, these are my favorite pencils. I have so many pencils, but I keep coming back to the Prismacolor. So I wanna give one of you the chance to enjoy this set of pencils. Good luck everyone and don't forget to be grateful. Choose to be grateful today and I hope you all have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye-bye everyone!